that next week is uh, our as a congregational meeting, and that will be to elect our pastor nominating committee. And in the bulletin, there is the list of nominees that have been contacted and have agreed to serve. And uh, we will have a short meeting. It will be at 11 o'clock uh, or shortly thereafter uh, here in the sanctuary. And those of you who are watching uh, on Facebook or you hear this, if you don't want to come to service but you'd like to be a part of the meeting, you're more than welcome to come after at 11 o'clock and we'll get everybody seated and have the meeting. We have to do the meeting in person, and that's one reason we've been waiting, uh, because, Robert, we don't have the bylaws set to do um, virtual meetings, so that's why that is. So we've got the food bank and uh, the nominating committee. I love this quote. Uh, it's been on Facebook a number of places, but I love it. Make sure you test positive for faith. Keep distance from doubt and isolate from fear. Trust God through it all. I love that. And uh, then a friend of ours, of Beth's and mine, uh, she's actually American. Uh, she speaks fluent Farsi, which is Iranian. Her, pa her husband is a pastor and is an Iranian pastor, and they pastor a large church in Texas. And uh, she's, she, she sent this out one day, Remove my masks, Lord. Humble me, for rightness only comes by your grace. Holiness is yours alone. And then from Hosea, may I show righteousness, see the fruit of unfailing love, and break up the hard ground of my heart, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and rains righteousness on me. And it is time to seek the Lord. Let's begin with our habit of silence in preparing our hearts to worship God.
Joan. Please join me in the call for worship. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Let's shout to God with loud songs of joy. The Lord of the Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. Gone, God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. Our hymn, the words are found in the bulletin, so if you're able, please stand. confession. The psalmist testifies, come in here, all you fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but God truly has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love for me. In the strength of this assurance, let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, we confess how hard it is to be your people. You have called us to be the church, to continue the mission of Jesus Christ to our lonely and confused world. Yet we acknowledge we are more apathetic than active, isolated than involved, callous than compassionate, obstinate than obedient, legalistic than loving. Gracious Lord, have mercy upon us and forgive our sins. Remove the obstacles preventing us from being your representatives to a broken world. Awaken our hearts to the promise of your indwelling spirit. This we pray in Jesus' powerful name. Hear the good news. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that in Jesus. God embraces you, forgives you, and strengthens you to live a life renewed life. Thanks be to God. As God has given peace through Christ, so let us pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of Christ be with you. 
and also with you. Please just stay where you are and turn around and say howdy to somebody and give them the peace of Christ be with you. Psalms 145. I will expel you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall lodge your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and steadfast, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and His compassion is over all He has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your domain endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all who look to you and give them the food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praises of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever.
Okay. All right. Oh, can you hear me? Hello. Uh, oh, I hear myself. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So we'll go ahead and open this box and see what's in there. What does it look like? Maybe some of the older ones will know what is in here. Cards and letters. You guys ever get cards and letters in the mail? Yeah. Well, I keep a lot of mine. And as you can see, a lot of mine are they're handwritten letters from my mother. So very long. Yeah, I went ahead and brought, brought a lot of my letters because that is a great way that people communicate. What are some other ways that we communicate and talk to one another? Texting. Texting. Absolutely. Anything else? A few phone calls. Yeah. So there's... Yes. You have one? Talking. Talking face to face. That's right. There are so many ways to communicate with one another. How does God communicate to us? Well, that's a little tricky question. Do you have any examples? One of my favorite stories from the Bible of God communicating to us was through Noah. Spirit, the Holy Spirit, yes. And um, we have lots of stories of the Holy Spirit coming to different people in the Bible. I always think of Noah and the message he got with the rainbow. Noah's Ark and the rainbow of God sending a message that things were going to be okay. Well, there are, there are all kinds of different ways that God can communicate with us. We just have to keep our eyes, our ears, and definitely our hearts open. Now, I know y'all have been in our school for a while, but do you think I can give you some homework? No, I'm going to know here. You might get two pieces of homework. He will give you two. I would like you to write a letter to somebody. Write a letter to somebody that maybe is far away. Open up some, some lines of communication. And, and uh, you might have to ask mom and dad for a, an envelope and a stamp. There's another letter you can write that doesn't need an envelope and a stamp. You write a letter to God. Think about some things you might want to thank God for, or ask for help with. Yeah, should we go ahead and say a prayer? Dear Lord, thank you again for bringing us together on this beautiful summer day. We are so gracious for all that you have given us, and us for your help getting through each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. How do we communicate? What is the word? We need to practice. Do I find him? How many of you just go send cards? And letters? That's really an art. Um, this morning we are going to begin a series of you're going to get tired of. This is not a three week series, this is not a four week series, this is going to be a nine week series. But it's going to be out of the revelation. I share it with you, you can pick it up. There's some uh, ideas. One of the things about the book of Revelation is we get a little over around and we forget to require it off. So I kind of included a few things about, uh, general things about the book so that you can kind of keep your mind about it. Did I turn myself off? Okay. All right, so uh, you can see that on the, that's there. Uh, it'll be good, maybe. Well, we're going to begin with Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us 
with all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. And then from Matthew, chapter 28. Have you ever asked the question, or had the question posed to you, are we there yet? Or, when will this end? When, when, when are things going to change? I don't know, a lot of us adults have been asking that, haven't we? When are, when are things going to change? When are we going to get back to normal? Will we ever get back to more normal? What is this going to be the end of? And that happened to Jesus and the disciples. Uh, Matthew tells us, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Now the temple, Herod's temple, was not as pretty or beautiful as Solomon's, but it was a very outstanding building. In fact, it was covered in white marble. People say that it gleamed in the sun. And he said, do you see all these things? Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. And as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, Watch out, that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. And all you mothers who have had children, you explain that line to your husbands, if they don't remember. Revelation chapter 1. Grace to you and peace is one of the themes. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel. By the way, uh, that can be translated the revelation from Jesus, or it can also be the revelation of Jesus. He gave to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God, and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it. By the way, do you know you're going to get a blessing today? Blessed are those who read the words, and blessed are those who hear the words of this prophecy, and take it to heart, what is written in it, because the time is near. So you need to not only hear, but you need to obey. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come. One of the things about Revelation is it's steep in Old Testament. There are more references to the Old Testament in the book of Revelation than any of the rest of the New Testament. And some of them are very subtle, some of them are not. This is one of them, and it refers back to Exodus when God told Moses that I am who I am, I will be who I will be, the famous tetragrammaton, the name of God. And so John picks that up and kind of translates it a little bit, that grace and peace to you from him who is, who was, 
and who is to come. And from the seven spirits before his throne, another reference to the prophets, actually, this time, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Did you catch that? We have the Trinity there, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The only difference is it's Father, Holy Spirit, and Son. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, more explanation of Jesus. I like this is another way to translate it. To the one who has an abiding love for believers, which is demonstrated by his completed past work of redemption from sins by means of his blood shed for them. And has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Notice what's going on here. Even in the beginning of this book, with this blessing that John gives, or is given to John from Jesus and from God, the Father, we have the Trinity, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son, and we have us, the people of the church. All major players in the book of Revelation. Look! He is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the A and Z, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Uh, that covers almost every name of God in the Old Testament. And the word the Almighty is uh, the word that is used in the Old Testament to speak of the mighty God, uh, oftentimes called El Shaddai. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, Sunday, I was in the Spirit, probably in worship, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, Write on a scroll what you see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, and Smyrna, and Pergamum, and Thyatira, and Sardis, and Philadelphia, and Laodicea. These are churches in uh, West Turkey, and not all the churches. But it's a group of them, and they actually make a circle. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. This is another thing that happens a lot in Revelation. He hears something, and he turns around, and then he sees it, and what he sees is not always necessarily what he hears. I turned around, and I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze, glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held the seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. And then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write therefore what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and of the seven golden lampstands, is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. All scripture, writes Paul, is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
I had to go back and pick up Daniel, too, because Daniel is used a lot in Revelation. And Daniel has a vision in chapter 7. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow, the hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. And then a little bit later in the vision, in my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. The book of Revelation is sometimes called the Apocalypse. And that is because in the Greek, the word Revelation is Apocalypse. And that's how the book begins. The Apocalypse of Jesus Christ or from Jesus Christ. And Apocalypse, we're used to thinking of it in terms of events. Uh, some of our younger people, maybe some of you, maybe uh, have watched some of the zombie stuff and the, apo the zombie apocalypse, right? You know? Well, apocalypse really means unveiling. Opening up, seeing what is not there. And as I think about this, I think about a, a quote and a story that Annie Dillard told in her first book, The Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, years and years ago. And she tells this story of a young girl that was born blind. But the blindness was not always, or was not, couldn't stop back and think a minute. The blindness was able to be fixed. And so at one point, the surgeon went in and they fixed her eyes so that she could see. And the first thing that she saw were, was a tree with lights in it. She had never seen a tree with leaves and the sun shining through it. And it was like a whole new world had opened up to her. And Annie Dillard in her book goes on to tell about walking along Tinker Creek and having a similar experience of having the world just become brilliant with lights and colors and then it would fade. That's apocalypse. That's, that's pulling back the curtain and seeing something that we haven't seen before. Remember those uh, pictures uh, that people used to paint that they would be all dappled? And then, but if you stood at the right distance and you focused on the right part, all of a sudden you'd see the one I remember is an eagle flying over a canyon. But if you step back away from it and you let your eyes focus on the wall, all you would see is this dappled picture with no distinctness to it. That's apocalypse. It's seeing something that we're not used to seeing. And the reason that I decided that uh, we should talk about Revelation a little bit is because it's important for us in our world today to see correctly. At the time that John wrote, and most people feel, most scholars feel, that this was probably written around towards the end of the 90s. There's some indication that it could have been written in the 60s, 60 AD, but most scholars think about 90 AD. In 60 AD, Nero was king, and Pharaoh, or not Pharaoh, Caesar, and he was persecuting the people around him, and particularly the church. In the 90s, Domitian becomes the Caesar. Uh, most scholars believe today that there wasn't a lot of widespread persecution, but there was individual persecution and uh, attacks upon Christianity in various local places. The Caesar uh, was claiming to be God, Lord, King, Son of God, 
the man who held all power and authority, and literally in the world, he did uh, as much as any human could. Uh, and his word was either life or death. And John is sent to Patmos as a little social distancing, shall we say. <laughs> he was sent there as a penal colony. And hopefully to remove him from his life with the churches in Asia Minor and Turkey. And there God speaks to John. And he gives him this phenomenal vision. And what he does is to begin to show John and the churches reality. But there are two parts to reality. One is what we see here, but there is the spiritual reality that exists in our life that is beyond what we normally see. And we, we can forget about that. It's really easy to, to focus just on this visible world. I could go into science and remind you that when we look at light, we are only seeing a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. You'd like to lecture on that. But that there are different wavelengths. There's the red and the really long, and then there's the blues and the violets and the light above that, and there's there's all this part to the electromagnetic spectrum, and we only see a small portion of it. The rest is unknown to us. Part of, not just that, but beyond that is the spiritual reality. And it is in our world, in a part of our world, and operating in our world, just like everything else. We often don't see it. We have eye problems. And that's what John was sent to tell him and to show him what reality is going on. Redem or Revelation has to do with God's redemption and how it will be consummated through the imminent coming of Jesus Christ. I love this quote from N.T. Wright. A great deal of this book is about ideas made visible and on the one hand and scripture made real on the other. It is, in fact, the sort of thing someone soaked in Scripture might see in the dream after pondering and praying for many days. And from Gordon D., another uh, comment on it. What is unique about John's apocalypse is the fine blending of each of the three kinds of literature, apocalypse, prophecy, and letter, into a single whole piece. This is a very complex book. But there are some important things, and in the beginning chapter that we just read, we're, we're given by John and by God some important things. First, the book is not so much about the end times and the visions and the images as it is about God the Father. The central character in Revelation is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we sometimes can get taken away by the other stuff, and it's important stuff. But the underlying basis is God, the Father, the Lord Almighty, who is and who was and who is to come. He is the giver of it, he is the controller of it, and he is the leader of it, not only of the book, but also of our life and reality. Number two, it's about the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't show up as much as God the Father and, and as God the Son, but the Holy Spirit is throughout the book. And the third and the most important character from God the Father and the Holy Spirit is the Son, Jesus Christ. And he appears over and over, and in fact, throughout the book, we have three diverse visions of Jesus, which emphasize different aspects of his person and work. Number one, he's the glorious son of man and ruler. We just read that. Couldn't that, you know, what do you think of Jesus? We have a picture of 
Jesus uh, done by a, a, a artist and it shows him holding a little lamb and it's such a sweet picture. He doesn't have white hair. He doesn't have a sword coming out of his mouth. He doesn't have burnished bronze feet. He's kind of sweet and meek and mild and wonderful. It's an image that you wouldn't fall down dead in front of. But Jesus is also one that if we saw him in all his glory, as John did, the only appropriate response is to throw ourselves on the floor. That's Jesus. That's one image of Jesus. Second is that he is the slaughtered lamb. And the third, he is a divine warrior. Jesus permeates Revelation. The other part of Revelation is the church. We are there throughout. And of course, there is the nations, there's the devil, there's Babylon, the evil city, there's the new Jerusalem. These are all parts of this world that we live in. And what we want to gain from chapter 1 is, is that this world is not out of control. It is under the control, the power, the will, and the authority of God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who was, who is, and who is to come, the Almighty. He is the one who's in control. We may feel like everything is flying off the handle, but God is in control. My wife has a little, um, well, it's like a business card. It's a little cartoon. And it has two penguins. And one penguin has a fish on top of its head. It's being swallowed whole. And the other little penguin says, don't worry, God's in control. Now, we may feel like the penguin being swallowed by the fish. But in reality, God is in control. Jesus is in control. John, when he wrote this out, when he shared it with the churches, he basically was telling Rome and Caesar and the powers that be, that you are not in control. You do not guide our destiny. You do not have the last say in the world. In a sense, it's very similar to what the Evangelical Confessing Church did when they wrote the Barnum Declaration of Faith in World War II. During that time, Hitler was trying to take over the church. In fact, he was doing a pretty good job of it. And he was controlling what was called the German Lutheran Church and the other church's pastors within Germany, many Lutheran pastors themselves and others, got together and said, this is not right. And they wrote out the Barman Declaration that basically said to Hitler, there is only one Lord, there is only one King, and it is Jesus Christ, and it is not you. They technically used the Greek, or the Greek, excuse me, the German word. Hitler liked to be called the pure. And they took that over because he had taken that over from the church. Just as Caesar had taken over the word, the Lord. So, at the beginning of this book, and in our life today, my word to you is, Remember that God, the Father, is on the throne. The Holy Spirit is around the throne in all wisdom and knowledge and understanding, the seven fullness of it. And Jesus Christ is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who stands as priest, by the way, that's the road that he's on, and he has the word of God that brings redemption and judgment is flowing out of his mouth. 
And he is the one that is controlling with God the Father and the Holy Spirit the world. Whether we see it or not, he is in control. Let's pray. Lord God, it's easy to for us to forget that you are active, present, and working for your purpose in our world. That even as we pray every week, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that you are accomplishing your will on earth as you do in heaven. And Lord, help us in the midst of everything that is going on in our lives personally and in our lives as a community and as a world that you are still in control and that you are working your purposes out. And that there will come a time when every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. In his name, the powerful name of Jesus, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the living one. Amen. At this time, we respond with our gifts, and we... I would encourage you, as you leave this morning, uh, when we're all finished, that there are offering baskets up front here. There's an offering basket by the west door in the back, and there's an offering basket over here. Please put your offering in it so that it is a no-touch offering. And uh, you can also give online at our pretty little green Give Now button if you want, or you can send a check in, whatever you would like. Let's stand and sing the doxology.
But Lord, we also pray for ourselves as this church. We ask that you lead and guide us through this time. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would uh, take the men and women that are going to serve us as a pastor nominating committee and guide them, that they may find us and that would bring to us the pastor that you have chosen for us, that they would come to lead us in a new season of history. Lord, we pray for those uh, for our country. We pray for our leaders, our president, our vice president, our congress, our senate, our judicial system. We pray, Lord, for our governor and our county legislature and our state legislature and our city and our mayors. We pray for our health care workers. We pray for our police, our fire. Lord, they're all important to us in many different ways. And we pray and lift them up. We ask that you would guide them, that you would teach them, that they would learn to turn to you, to be guided by you, to seek solutions that would be for our country the best. Lord, we pray for those in our congregation that are ill, for our family members or friends that we know that are, have sickness or maybe are having surgeries or have had physical difficulties or problems. Lord, whatever it might be, that you would be with them, that you would touch them, that you would heal them, that you would bring your grace and peace to bear upon them. Lord, be with the doctors and nurses and all those in the healthcare profession, especially right now. And, and protect them and, and give them extra wisdom as they try to figure out how to deal with new diseases and new complications. Lord, we thank you for our country and for the freedoms that we have had over the years. And we pray, Lord, that we would be able to solve and to, to find solutions to some of the weaknesses that are in our country and to strengthen us for another 200 years. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Lord, take away the fear that we might have. Take away doubt from our heart. Fill it with your presence, your love, your grace, your mercy. Let us know your presence in our lives on a daily basis. Let us take back the curtain a little bit and let us see your glory and your beauty and your wonder. Encourage us and support us in our life. And we give you all the praise and the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's come to the Lord's table. The way we're going to do communion this morning and probably for the next couple times, is we are going to, at the appropriate time, we'll invite you forward uh, to partake. Uh, there is uh, bread, uh, individual pieces on a little muffin cup for you, and there is individual uh, glasses of the juice with communion. So we'll have you come forward uh, at the appropriate time. The elders will assist you and you can partake of the bread and the wine. There is a, a what do they call these things? Garbage, waste can. Uh, sometimes words fail me. Uh, there's some waste cans here, and that's how we will do communion. But let's begin by singing, Seek ye first the kingdom of God.
feast of the people of God. People will come from east and west, and from north and south, and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is where we receive the blessing of God through Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our spirits and hearts on time. Whence we look for his return in majesty. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall endure. You are always the same, and your years will never end. You made us in your image, and you called us to be your people, but we turned from you, leaving sin and death to reign. Still, you loved us, and sought us in Christ. Your grace defeated death, and opened the way to eternal life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our white voices. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, we're right. Joining our voices with the heavenly choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O Lord God of majesty. Blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent your only begotten in whom your fullness dwells to be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Revealing your love, Jesus taught those who would hear him, healed those who believed in him, received all who sought him, and lifted the burden of their sin. We glorify you for your great power and love at work in Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new people by water and the Spirit. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread, this wine, from the gifts you have given us, and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ, with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. And as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O God, by the power of your Spirit to live as love commands, bound to Christ, set us free for joyful obedience, glad service. As Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection when with the redeemed of all the ages we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church now and forever. We pray together as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, he has prepared his table for all who love him, who all who can trust in him alone for their salvation. All who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and who desire to live in obedience to him, you are all invited now to come with gladness to his peace. 
Here are the words of the institution of our Holy Supper. Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks unto God, he blessed, he broke it, and then he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then at the end of the supper, he took a cup. And again, he gave thanks unto God for the fruit of the vine. And he said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And St. Paul added that every time we eat the bread, and every time we drink the cup, we do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Would the elders please come forward? And as, uh, after they are set up here, if you would please, uh, this is not part of the training in my worship class. But, would you please bring your, uh, come forward and maintain kind of a nice social distance as you come forward uh, to partake of the elements. And as soon as you're up here, take the bread and the cup, share them with yourself, and then sit down. Please, thank you. said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. My father is the gardener. He trims each and every branch that it may bear more fruit. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you.
how he loves you and me. Congregation in Christ, since the Lord has fed us at his table, let us praise his holy name. Let's sing together a little song, Bless His Holy Name. We've shared this fellowship 
and we have shared our fellowship together, and now it's your turn to go out into the world to speak God's word, to share his love, his fellowship, his grace, his mercy, with all you need. And may you go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May his grace richly fall upon you. May his peace fill your hearts. And may you go in the power of his presence. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing the last first verse of Crown and Earth Many Crowns. Thank you.